bring the soldiers and the corpses back to Russia. This is a rally organized by activists in St. Petersburg in early March. They burned an effigy of a soldier on the ice of the Mavaya Neva river. Over its head there was a sack with the inscription bring back. Everything would be fine, but one of the suspects is already held in a pre-trial detention center. A criminal case has also been initiated against the university student Sonia Semenova. After her apartment was searched, Sonia left Russia. I had to leave Russia because of the criminal prosecution for an anti-war rally, the burning of an effigy in military uniform on Maslenitsa. Now I am safe in another country, but I can only return when the regime ends. My case is closed and I am rehabilitated. Imprisonment, apartment searches, funeral rests left on the doorsteps and letter Z painted on the front door. This is how student activists are punished in Russia for their anti-war position. Moreover, they are even expelled from universities for liking posts that criticize the university management. An authoritarian country is such a system, such a model where everyone's rights mean nothing, where the ruling party has full power in all spheres of life. The door of a 22-year-old Moscow State University student Dmitry Ivanov was also spoiled. Unknown people wrote, do not betray the motherland and drew the letter Z in white paint. Since the beginning of the war, Dmitry openly writes about the war in Ukraine on his Telegram channel. More likely, someone told them that they should go to these addresses and do it, and in return they will be rewarded. So they did it. On April the 28th, Ivanov was detained near the university building. He was arrested for 10 days, allegedly for posting in anonymous Telegram channels. It is possible to formally arrest me several times for a period of 30 days. Well, it will be unpleasant, but not as scary as war, so I'm mentally prepared. Another student of the journalism faculty of Moscow State University, Olga Misik, is better known as a girl with a constitution. She publicly read Russia's fundamental law to police officers. Hold meetings, rallies, demonstrations, marches and picketing. Have you heard of it? In an interview with Doha student magazine, Olga admitted that she was against war because she could not feel otherwise. She believes she is doing the best thing for Russia. If earlier Russian activists went to anti-war rallies, now they work more on the information front. I don't want my words to fall under another article, so I'd better remind you that two things are most effective now – education and publicity, as well as volunteer organizations. For the first one, you don't even need flyers, stickers or channels with a large audience. It's enough to talk to parents, colleagues, neighbors at the household level, tell them about what is happening and try to convince them. This is the little that everyone can do, and such little activism should not be neglected. Many universities openly forbid speaking out about the war in Ukraine. Instead, they conduct propaganda lectures and polls and force students to participate in flash mobs. This is how students of the Kazan Institute of Culture supported the so-called special operation in Ukraine. The international system of peace and law is not able to help this minority in any way. And here we are still talking about a minority that is trying to speak out against the war. Unfortunately, the majority of Russians support the war and the authorities' policies. Therefore, in the future, they will bear historical responsibility for everything that is happening now in Ukraine. Among plenty of good things in Russia, there is one evil sitting in the Kremlin, say the students with an anti-war stance. They believe that soon the power in the country will change, and they only speed up this process by their actions. Reported by Pavel Steinmach, Viktoria Sinko, UATV News.